So reboots and remakes are a dime a dozen, and if you ask me, that's about all they're worth. 99% of the time, they're not nearly as good as the original, but in today's video, I'm gonna tell you about 10 remakes that actually surpass the original. As usual, the full list of all the movies discussed can be found in the top pinned comment down below, along with where you can stream them in your respective English-speaking country. But my first pick on this list is one of the few horror movies on this list, and it's one of the more recent movies on this particular list, Stephen King's It. Now this one gets a little bit of a leg up because the original was a made-for-TV movie, or they used to call them mini-series, but it's probably like a two and a half to three hour movie with a lower production value than you typically would have gotten back when that was released, but that was kind of par for the course for made-for-TV movies. The new remakes are not only better in terms of their production, they spent a lot more money on these, they've got better actors, and, and really just a top-notch production. They actually were well-written, well-directed across the board. These are tremendously successful horror remakes. They also sort of freshened up the source material. I think they did a good job bringing all of the best stuff to the surface in their relatively short run times when you put these two movies together, but I absolutely love them. I think the younger cast in the first movie was fantastic, and they did a killer job casting the second one. The second one gets a little wilder and crazier, but I did really enjoy it, and I highly recommend these movies if you passed on them. Now, in this list of 10 movies, I only have one that is a family-friendly movie, but it is so good, I felt the need to recommend it here, Pete's Dragon. A dragon. Now this can be found on Disney Plus in most regions and is a remake of the 1977 Disney classic Peach Dragon where a boy befriends this invisible dragon. That movie itself had some cool effects for the time but it's much more of a musical and it's also pretty long in the tooth. It's over two hours and just really does not hold up today. I've tried watching it with my kids and it's just a different form of entertainment than they're used to today. However, the remake is an incredible family adventure movie. Just like It, Pete's Dragon has a top-notch production. It's a beautiful movie. They've got incredible actors working on this, including Bryce Dallas Howard and Robert Redford in one of his final movies. And Carl Urban plays a pretty good villain, if you can call him that, in this movie. But not only is the movie stunning and beautiful, it's also got a killer director behind the camera. David Lowery has directed movies like The Green Knight and A Ghost Story. Artsy films that not everybody gets, but Peach Dragon will appeal to an incredibly broad audience. This one is so good. Some of you might actually enjoy watching this without kids, but I'm telling you the next time you need to put something on for the family, Peach Dragon is a total gem. Okay, now I technically have three more horror movies on this particular list. They're all fantastic, but my next one is not only a remake, it's also technically a sequel at the same time, but let me explain how The Evil Dead 2 qualifies for this list. Now, while in name, it definitely is a sequel to the original, when you watch The Evil Dead and The Evil Dead 2 back to back, they are almost the same movie. Meaning, The Evil Dead 2 is not really a continuation of the first Evil Dead, it's kind of a second attempt. The Evil Dead is a classic, it's filled with some of the most practical effects you're going to see in a movie anywhere, one of the big reasons why it's such a cult classic. But then when they come back for The Evil Dead 2, it takes place in the same location, same actors, same basic setup, and they just quadruple the insanity. They had a lot more money to work with, a lot more experience from having done the first film, and created something that literally surpasses the original in every way imaginable, except for originality. The first Evil Dead gets major points for being the original, and the sequel definitely would not have existed without the original, but again, they upped the ante so well with the sequel, it really is one of the greatest sequels of its kind ever made. Now my next pick is a James Bond movie, some of you already know what it is, because Casino Royale was not only a terrible original movie, arguably, I know some people like it, but the remake with Daniel Craig, his first outing as Bond, is easily one of the best they've ever made. 
Now it is important to note that the original Casino Royale was actually made as a comedy. It's silly, it's really not in line with any of the other Bond films released around that time. It stands out on its own and as such, some people really enjoy the original Casino Royale, but when compared to the rest of the James Bond filmography, it really stands out on its own as this weird thing that they made. Then they make a similar plot with Casino Royale starring Daniel Craig and just blow the brakes off of it. I mean, I still remember seeing this in the movie theater. I was always a fan of James Bond movies. I kind of became old enough to watch them when Pierce Brosnan was making them, and I liked those. But what Daniel Craig did and what the whole production team did with Casino Royale not only reinvigorated the franchise, but it still, to this day, holds up as one of the best in the entire series. They've made over 20 of them. This has one of the best villains. It has some of the best action and it's patient, it takes its time. Half the movie takes place in this card game, and it's tense without a lot of action. So Casino Royale does almost everything right, and I give them big points for taking the name from the goofiest Bond movie and turning it into, again, just one of the best. David Cronenberg makes this list with another horror pick that is easily one of the most famous horror remakes ever made, the Fly. By the way, that top pinned comment down below, I'm also gonna tell you where you can stream the originals, so be sure to check that out when the video's over, but I happen to love the original movie, The Fly. It came out in 1958, and it is just a campy, 1950s, fun sci-fi movie. It does have some interesting effects, but for the most part, this is a pretty tame movie with some poignant points about scientific endeavors, but I remember watching this as a really young kid with my family, and while it was maybe a little scary at the time, it is pretty accessible and still holds up today as this fun 1950s sci-fi movie. But what David Cronenberg did with it in the 80s didn't just up the ante on it, it completely changed it into this body horror show that is still considered to have some top-notch practical effects. David Cronenberg is an absolute madman. He loves to gross audiences out, and The Fly succeeded, not only because all the effects were so gross, but the movie itself is really effective at conveying this basic concept, and it's the exact same story as the original, so in this case, these actually make a fantastic double feature to see the two completely different tones taken for essentially the same basic concept. Now, if I'm giving you an itch to watch some of these movies and you can't find them on Netflix or Prime or wherever you stream movies, I highly recommend checking out today's sponsor, CyberGhost. CyberGhost VPN is a VPN that keeps your web browsing safe, secure, and private. You need to have a VPN these days. People are trying to get your information, and this keeps you safe, and it's cheap for what it does. They all are. But if you're gonna use one, you might as well use the one I recommend, CyberGhost VPN, because they have specialized servers that are gonna allow you to watch Netflix, Prime Video, Hulu, all the major streaming services in a variety of different countries with the flick of a switch. CyberGhost is super easy to use, but they've got 24 seven customer support if you need any help getting it set up on multiple devices, because you can use this on up to seven devices at the exact same time. And they offer a 45 day money back guarantee. So you can try CyberGhost for a month and a half. And if you don't feel like you're getting the value out of it, you can just cancel it for a full refund. But it's gonna be pretty easy to get value out of it because right now my viewers can get up to 84% off. That means you could pay as low as $2.03 per month to unlock more movies and shows than you could ever possibly hope to watch. Again, that's $2.03 a month plus four free months on top of that. It's a fantastic deal. Speaking of fantastic stuff, let's talk about the top five movies on this list. All right, now the 1983 classic starring Al Pacino, Scarface is my next pick. It is actually a remake of a 1932 film titled Scarface. Different gangsters from different backgrounds, similar setup, similar story. While the 1932 is a classic and does have some nice filmmaking touches that actually still kind of hold up today. It's a good watch. The 1983 classic by De Palma is really untouched in its category. Yes, Al Pacino's performance is a little silly and over the top, 
But that is kind of what makes this movie such a classic and what makes so many of his movies and performances classics. In fact, there's another classic Al Pacino performance on this particular list. But the 80s version of Scarface has a killer soundtrack, an incredible look, it's been remastered, it still looks great today. And it's just one of the best gangster epics ever made. I actually love that these two films exist in these sort of two different flavors. Another thing that's really interesting to me about Scarface is almost to the year, an exact amount of time has passed between the first Scarface, the second, and today, which means the Al Pacino version is just as old to us today as the 1932 version was back in 83 when Scarface came out. I don't know, I thought that was kind of cool for some perspective. I know some of you were probably wondering if Dune was gonna make the list, and indeed it does, because the new one was so much better than David Lynch's version. I do know some people have some nostalgia for the David Lynch version, but that movie is famously a mess. David Lynch even disowns it. He does not consider it to be one of his movies because there was so much heavy studio interference. And it's also hard to kind of consider this a remake because they're not readapting the original movie. They're just taking from the book and doing a much better job at adapting a very complicated story to explain. I mean, it takes place in this completely different world. So there's a lot of exposition required to just let us know the landscape and where we are and how things operate. And the new version did a sublime job with this. There's so much information conveyed to the viewer, sort of passively without these long conversations between two people that are just boring and dull and only serve to explain the story, the director, Denis Villeneuve, just slid some information in there really perfectly. Now, I will say the reason this isn't ranked any higher is because it is unfinished. It's only half of the story. So hopefully part two continues to tell the story as well as part one. I personally can't wait, but this one, I'm sure most of you knew was gonna make the list somewhere. But my next pick is probably one most of you will be surprised to find out was even a remake or a reboot. But The Revenant, starring Leonardo DiCaprio and Tom Hardy, is actually based on a true story that has been turned into a movie before. In 1971, the director of the classic Vanishing Point actually directed a movie called Man in the Wilderness. Richard Harris plays a man named Zachary Bass who was left for dead loosely based on the story of Hugh Glass, which is the man that The Revenant is based on. But Man in the Wilderness actually follows the true story much closer. And it's also more of a traditional movie. The story comes through a little bit more clearly. It's better in several ways, but the DiCaprio version is directed by Alejandro Iñárritu, who has done some amazing work. I mean, The Revenant has some incredible cinematography and it's some of the best on this entire list. But there's also a bunch of scenes that were done as one long take, and it keeps you in the action in a way that feels like you're there. It feels very raw and realistic. I love this version of the movie. I think a lot of things are better written about it, and it's shot in a way that's a little more in time with modern times. Not to take away from the original, that's still kind of a cool frontiersman western type movie, but it's pretty dated, whereas The Revenant not only did some really inventive things in terms of filmmaking, but you've got top-notch performances and a killer story, even if the storytelling in the filmmaking style is a little loose. All right, the last horror movie on this list is actually John Carpenter's The Thing. This is loosely based on the 1951 movie, The Thing from Another World. The original also took place at an Arctic outpost. The title sequence, they actually recreated in this really cool way for the 80s version. And they embraced a lot of the things that were interesting and scary about the 1950s version. But this is also just a 1950s drive-in movie. It's only gonna be so scary. But John Carpenter made the thing a terrifying prospect because it definitely is. Not only is the tension building and the performances and just the total production just fantastic on the thing, but it is famous for having some of the best practical effects in a movie of all time. Practical effects that not only hold up today, but that still baffle industry professionals, things that were so cutting edge and so advanced at the time that they're still widely used today. It's fantastic stuff. I mean, it is one of the best movies of its kind. I'm a big John Carpenter fan. The man has made some incredible classics, movies that I love. But in terms of just solid storytelling, effective scares and tension, 
The Thing might actually be his masterpiece. I realize that's blasphemy to people who love Halloween, but The Thing is something special. And then believe it or not, one of the greatest crime movies ever made is actually somewhat of a remake. Hang with me here, because we're about to talk about how Michael Mann's Heat is actually a remake of a movie he did earlier titled L.A. Takedown. Now, if you've never heard of L.A. Takedown, don't worry. This was actually a made-for-TV movie released in 1989. Michael Rooker actually stars in this and a whole bunch of nobodies, but this was actually directed after Michael Mann had already done Manhunter, the first Hannibal Lecter movie, and Thief, starring James Caan. And L.A. Takedown is basically the same story as Heat. It's very similar. It's ripped from the same original true crime story and has a lot of scenes that are going to look very familiar to fans of Heat. But again, it's a made-for-TV movie. It's a smaller production. Heat would come out six years later and not only featured a lot more money behind the camera and a bigger production and still a glossy look that looks incredible today over a quarter of a century later, but you've got Al Pacino and Robert De Niro on screen for the first time. I know they were both in The Godfather Part Two, but they're on screen together for the first time in this movie, both delivering killer performances. Again, even if Al Pacino's is a little bit over the top. Obviously the diner scene with them is a famous one, but the crime elements in this are not only fun and entertaining to watch, they're also among the most realistic ever brought to screen. And that statement still holds up again, over 25 years later, this still is one of the best movies of its kind. Maybe because he had a crack at it first with that made for TV movie. Again, the full list of all the movies I talked about is in the top pinned comment down below, along with which streaming services they're on in a variety of countries. You can also use that CyberGhost link to immediately start watching any of these right now. But I will keep making these videos as long as you keep watching them. Thanks for checking out this special reboot list and you will see me on the next one.